Every once in a while, a job's gonna come along that is just sheer torture. It's riddled with difficulties from start to finish. The director doesn't really know what he wants, so you gotta do all the work for him. Locations haven't been scouted yet, so you gotta make them all up, knowing full well you're gonna have to redraw them all later. The producer's trying to lowball you on your rate, despite the fact you're working at one of the most profitable production companies on the planet, and I know you got the money. Oh, and by the way, they need the entire job done in the next four hours. I'm telling you, some jobs are just not worth the try. This is not one of those jobs. Today we'll be taking a look at a wacky little spot that I drew up last year for Pace Picante Salsa. Now I chose this job to show you just how easy this gig can be when you're working with the right team. You should say a little prayer before bed each night, just begging God that all your jobs are as effortless as this one. This, my friends, is what dreams are made of. Enjoy. Tuesdays are for tacos, aren't they? Today we'll be examining that very question by drawing up this cute little spot for Pace Picante Salsa. The spot takes place in an old western saloon on a beautiful Tuesday afternoon as a group of cowboys get into a bit of a disagreement over what they're going to eat for lunch. They take turns throwing out some suggestions, each one a little bit more ludicrous than the last. Things like Tofu Tuesday, Tapioca Tuesday, Huna Tuesday, until finally a cowgirl enters the saloon and says, hey guys, Tuesdays are for tacos. The whole thing's a bit tongue-in-cheek and slightly ridiculous, although not nearly as ridiculous as failing to hit that like button below. The YouTube algorithm is thirsty for likes, so let's get her stinking drunk on them. As always, I've included a link to the script and the director's treatment in the comment section below, so if you'd like to have a more detailed look at the project before jumping into this episode, knock your socks off, cowboy. Alright, so what makes this job so dang easy? I'll tell you, for starters, this entire team is just really cool to work with. The producer is super friendly, just an all-around good guy. The coordinator is always easy to work with. The production company itself, they're very professional, they always pay up on time. But at the end of the day, it comes down to this particular director. This director is absolutely one of my favorite directors to work with. Because every time we get together and he hands me a gig, he goes to all the trouble of putting these PDFs together with screen grabs from different movies and sometimes location photos, but it spells out exactly the shots that he wants. It completely removes the guesswork from the situation, so I don't even really have to think about it. I just copy these images, drop them into my storyboard template, and then I spend the afternoon tracing them. Couldn't be easier. The next step in our process is going to be to draw up a first pass of the boards. Shot one, an opening wide shot of an old western town. As usual, I'm using Painter 2020 for this job. Painter is my preferred program, but Photoshop is also great. One of the reasons I prefer Painter over Photoshop is this perspective tool that I'm using right now. I first set it to one point perspective, and then all I gotta do is position the vanishing point so that all the lines match up with the architecture in the photo. As you can see, from this point forward, all the lines I draw will either be constrained to these perspective lines or straight vertical or horizontal lines. This tool is so incredibly useful, particularly when drawing architecture, that I'm genuinely surprised that Photoshop has no equivalent. I recently bought a Lazy Nazumi plugin for Photoshop, which looks awesome, but I haven't used it enough to be comfortable employing it when I'm under a deadline. I've also tooled around with Autodesk Sketchbook, and they got some fantastic perspective and ruler tools, including a handful of French curves which are really handy. But I was not a big fan of their brushes or interface. I hear great things about Clip Studio Paint and Procreate, but for now, Painter is my go-to software. Shot two, wide interior of the saloon. Cowboy One says, it's Tuesday, boys. You know what that means. Now, if you look closely at this location photo, you can see the director labeled where each of the characters will be. So I'm just going to loosely block them all in for now, and I'll come back and clean these all up later. And in case you're curious, I'm using my fine marker here for all this sketching. I'll use this brush alongside the chisel marker, which I use to add volume and shadows. Those two brushes account for like 90% of all my drawing. Shot three, we're seeing Cowboy 2 from behind as he says, Turkey? In this reference photo that he sent me, the cowboy is in the process of standing. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this sitting cowboy from this other frame, copy, paste him into position, and then trace him instead. Alright, I'm having a little bit of trouble with this hat for some reason, so I'm going to create a separate sketch layer so I can screw around with that until I get a shape that I like. Then I'll go back into my main layer, trace the sketch, then delete the sketch layer, and then finish it up. Looks like there's a couple other guys sitting here at the table. I 
guessing playing poker. Doesn't really matter, but I'll just draw them playing poker. Then I'll move on to fleshing out all of these nifty background characters. Now let's remove the reference photo so I can switch over to my chisel marker and focus on adding some volume to this guy. Shot four. Hero Cowboy is in the foreground saying, the heck did you say? We want to see the bad cowboy in the background. So I'm just tracing this screen grab that the director pulled from the Ballad of Buster Scruggs. But I'm going to add a mustache and change this guy's face slightly so it's not so obvious that it's a direct lift. And with the hero cowboy drawn, I'm going to flip the canvas, start drawing up the bad cowboy who's sitting in the background. As you can see, I like rotating the canvas a lot as I draw, particularly if I'm drawing curved lines. That's the way I learned to draw back when it was all just pencil and paper. I'd always be rotating the paper, mostly without realizing I was even doing it. My hand is most comfortable drawing curves towards me and at a very specific angle. Think about drawing a line from a 12 o'clock position on a clock back to the 9 o'clock position. That's just my personal preference. Each artist is different. Some artists like to push curves. I like to pull them in towards me. Finally, I'll add a little bit of architecture here in the background just to flesh this out. Moving on to shot five, which is a reverse of shot three. It's a close up of the bad cowboy as he says, it's Turkey Tuesday. All right, so this guy's just sitting here looking down at his cards and saying his lines. I'm just tracing this photo exactly as is, couldn't be simpler. You may notice that as I move along, I'm copying and pasting these cowboys into a separate document. Now, I'll keep this document in my stock folder under cowboys. You never know when they'll come in handy in the future. Shot 6. Similar to shot 4, just punched in a little tighter as the tension mounts. Now, realistically speaking, they're never going to have enough time to show each of these story beats. Not in a 30 second spot anyway. This is something that you'll see often. I'll storyboard out a commercial and it'll have something like 15 or 20 shots in it. Then when you watch the actual commercial, they've only used half of them, if that. For the longest time, I never really understood why that happened. I figured maybe the director wasn't sure how many shots he was going to need, so he just had me draw up a lot, you know, just to be safe. But about 12 years ago, I was working with a guy on a 30 second commercial. It was a Lexus spot, I believe, and it involves some guy racing along in an urban environment, avoiding a bunch of attackers. So there were ninjas coming at him, archers on the rooftop firing arrows at him. And then one guy drops down from an overhead bridge, goes through the sunroof, lands in the passenger seat, at which point a fist fight breaks out, all while racing along at 70 miles an hour. I asked the director, how are you going to fit all this into a 30 second spot? He laughed and said, no, I'm not, are you kidding me? That'd be impossible. I'm shooting all this because I'm going to cut myself a little two minute video out of the footage. See, I don't have any action sequences in my reel, so this will help me round that out. And who knows, maybe it'll lead to more action oriented spots as a result. Until that moment, I did not realize that a lot of directors do what's called shoot for their reel. It basically means they'll take the footage and cut together the story they want to tell without having to be concerned with the 30 second time constraint. In movies, these edits are commonly known as a director's cut, but I never realized there was an equivalent in commercials. 
If you want to see a fantastic example of a director's cut, Google Lacoste commercial, timeless director's cut. All right, moving on to page two, we've got shot seven, which is a slow push in on the bad cowboy as he stands. He looks menacing with his fingers itching over his holsters. Once again, for both this shot and the next, the director's giving me a screen grab from the movie The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. I'm Buster, Buster Scruggs. Now, I get that by now you may be saying to yourself, wait a minute, this guy's just a thief. He's stealing all these shots from the damn Corn Brothers. That's the way you want to put it. That's the way it is. Yeah, I hate this guy's stupid guts. I can understand that point of view, though I am a bit baffled by gratitude. But when you watch the actual commercial at the end of this video, you'll find that he doesn't actually use these shots as I've boarded them. You see, every director has a different method of working which works for them. Some guys scout out the location in advance and take very detailed photos using crew members as stand-ins for the actors. I see a lot of that on this channel, actually. Those guys subscribe to the belief that you should plan your shoot and shoot your plan. Others, like our friend here, prefer a more organic approach where they work out their shots the day of the shoot. Once they're on the set, they'll have the actors run through the scene once or twice and then they'll find their shots as they go. The problem with this approach is that no client is going to sign off on essentially just winging it. Before they'll sign the checks, they need to walk onto that set with some kind of a blueprint in mind. To that end, the director will hire someone like me more to ease the fears of the sheep than to create an actual shooting plan. Each of these shots is meant to be a suggestion rather than a commitment. It provides a strong idea of what they're going to want to capture in order to tell the story later in the end. The next three shots are a tense close-up of the hero cowboy's eyes, a tense close-up of the bad cowboy's eyes, and then a tense close-up of the turkey's eyes. Moving on to shot 11. Moving on to shot 11, we're gonna to cut to a medium wide shot as a cook pops out from the kitchen and breaks the tension by saying, toast Tuesday? The cook should be slathering butter on the toast. This shot seems a bit odd the way that it's framed up in this photo. For me, it just feels a little too flat to camera. So to help balance it out, I'm gonna draw two cowboys in the middle ground on either side of the window. This will add a little bit of depth and hopefully create a better composition in the end. Shot 12, whip over to the piano. The piano player holds a giant tuna fish up over his head, still alive and still dripping. He says, Tuna Tuesday. Now the director sent me two frames to draw for this shot, an A and a B. I'm using Painter's perspective tool here to set one point perspective. This will help keep all of my lines straight and all shooting towards the same vanishing point. Entirely certain what a tuna looks like. I mean, unless it comes in a can and for some reason doesn't approve of Charlie. Sorry, Charlie. So I went ahead and grabbed this reference photo from that nifty little interweb I keep hearing about. Yeah, it looks about right to me. Then I'll just sketch him out holding this thing up above his head. Shot 13, a clearing of the throat directs our attention to a rough and tumble cowgirl. The 
The camera whip pans to her holding a jar of paste picante salsa. Once again, I went ahead and found an internet photo that I feel works for the cowgirl in general. Then I pulled a photo of the paste picante jar. And finally, I found a third photo of some girl just holding a jar in her hand. I'm now going to photo bash all three of them and then trace over the result. Just as a cowgirl is about to speak up, we whip pan over to a woman standing next to a tangerine tree. She says, Tangerine Tuesday. For no particular reason, I'm going to draw her wearing a corset. Like maybe she's a working girl and she's downstairs talking to the prospects, trying to entice them into one of her tangerines. As an alternative to that last shot, the director also requested I draw a cowboy outside the window next to a tangerine tree. So again, to add depth, I'll throw a few cowboys sitting in the foreground here with their backs to camera. I'm doing that because in the wonderful wacky world of filmmaking, if you can see somebody's face, they get upgraded from extra to featured extra, and that ends up costing the production a bit more money. Shot 15, cut to a cowboy covered in turmeric. When he says, Turmeric Tuesday, a puff of yellow-orange dust blooms from his mouth. Shot 16. Cowboy in a bath says, Turnip Tuesday. He holds up a bunch of turnips freshly pulled from the ground with roots and dirt still attached. Shot 17, then back to the bad guy saying, Tea Tuesday? He holds up an extremely dainty teacup and dips his tea bag in it.
Shot 18, cut to the bartender saying, Tofu Tuesday? The bartender eats a white cube from a bowl with chopsticks, then takes a swig of tapioca and says, or tapioca Tuesday? Shot 19, cut to our cowgirl. Y'all must have never heard of the bold flavor of pace. In shot 20, she begins to slide the jar of pace because they sold it down the bar. In 21, Shot 20, a close up of her hand as she begins to slide the jar of paste picante salsa down the bar. Now I'm going to copy and paste this jar into a B-frame where we see it sliding down a bar and passing some food. Now in shot 21, we've got the jar traveling down the bar away from the camera. So again, I'm just going to copy paste the same jar, but I'll erase the label and I'll draw it so it looks like it's more on the side. Shot 22 is a much closer shot of the jar traveling left to right down the bar. At this point, I should redraw the jar again because copying and pasting the smaller image and scaling it up is just going to make it look too fragmented. Shot 23, cut back to the cowgirl now at the other end of the bar. She catches the pace and says, America's favorite salsa for tacos straight out of Texas. Finally, cut back to the cowboys for their reactions. They're saying things like, oh yeah, I guess that makes more sense, doesn't it? So I'm gonna sketch this out into two different frames just so I can mix it up a bit. Now that all the initial sketches are done, I'm going to grab my chisel marker and go back and vary up the line width a bit. I like to use a chisel marker to add volume and paint in all the shadows. And with that done, we've got our first set of sketches ready to email to the director. Let's take a look at what we've done. Okay, with this initial set of sketches done, it's time to shoot these boards out to the director and get his comments. 
So the first email I got in response simply said, these are amazing, man, great job, which is always nice to hear. But then he sent a second email which said, you don't have to go into any more detail on these. One, but I would like a shot of the paste eventually sliding into the perfect product shot next to a bowl filled with salsa and a ton of tacos. Two, we then cut to all the reaction shots. What you have is great. Three, then to the plate of tacos where all the various hands come in and take a taco shot from overhead. Four, then a shot of those hands cheering with the tacos. Five, then a shot of everybody behind the bar, in front of the bar, around the bar as a portrait to camera holding tacos. Let me know if you have any questions. A few minutes later, yet another email came and it said, I draw a bland cowboy eating a bland block of tofu at a table by himself. Then let's draw a chubby cowboy next to a tangerine tree with piles of tangerine all around him and picking a tangerine. Let's draw a cowboy standing and holding up a bunch of turnips in each hand, kind of like this photo but with both hands. Finally, let's draw a bartender taking toast from a toaster and holding it up. Okay, so let's get cracking. Okay, so the good news is I don't have to go back and redraw any of these frames. Normally at this point, I'd go back in, redraw everything, putting in a lot more detail, but the director says it's not necessary, so we can move on. The less than good news is that apparently I've got a little bit more drawing to do. So let's get to it. By now, you should have a pretty decent understanding of my process. For each of these shots, I'm gonna download reference photos, photo bash them when necessary, and then simply trace over them, adding in the appropriate attire and backgrounds. For the shot here with the bartender, I just took a photo of myself holding up a toaster. And don't laugh, I do this all the time and it's super handy. At this point, I've got an entire folder just filled with goofy photos of myself acting out various commercials. You'd be surprised how useful they are.
just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in again. After sending the director what I thought was going to be the final set of boards, he responded with this email. Vinny, these are awesome. For the tofu guy, can we have a knife in one hand and a fork in the other instead of chopsticks? And I need one last frame drawn if possible. Taffy Tuesday, a cowboy with so much taffy in his mouth he could barely talk. Like this alien shopper with taffy, strands that go from the top of his mouth to the bottom. And it's also super sticky to his fingers, uh, like, like he's holding up his hands and there's taffy stuck from his fingers to the table. Make sense? The first request is simple enough. I just found some guy holding a fork and knife and dropped him into my template. The second request is so unusual that the likelihood of me finding or even photo bashing reference for this is slim to none. So I'm simply going to freehand this one. The first step is to very loosely start sketching in the basic shapes. This initial sketch will serve the same purpose as photo reference, meaning I'll work it out in sketch phase first and then go back and trace over it. Now, as you can see here, I'm obviously exaggerating the proportions of his mouth, drawing it considerably larger than is actually possible, because his mouth is full of taffy and I'm looking to embellish that effect. And I'm gonna draw his hand raised, like he's in class and wants to answer a question. I'm gonna toss in another guy here in the background, just some dude watching his guy. And a few more over here on the left. Okay, with all that worked out, it's time to focus on the actual taffy. So I'm gonna draw it going from his hand to the table, and then add the strands in his mouth. And then we'll have a couple of strands going from his mouth to his hand. And just for the heck of it, from his mouth to the tape. Maybe, maybe this is a bit overkill, but you know, I'll let the director decide that. Finally, on a separate layer, I'm gonna go back in and trace over my initial sketch, resulting in a much cleaner illustration. I'm gonna create a new layer for the taffy. The reason I'm doing this is so that after the taffy is drawn, I'll be able to just drop down to the previous layer and delete everything that appears behind the taffy.
as usual, once I've got my illustration all worked out, I'll grab my chisel marker, go back in and vary up the line width, adding volume and shadows as I go. Okay, this is looking pretty good to me. Let's shoot this out and hopefully get final approval. And sure enough, the boards have been approved. At this point, I sent to Bruce my invoice and closed the job done. Let's go ahead and take a look at the final commercial. Woo-wee! It's Tuesday, boys. You know what that means. Turkey. The heck you say? It's Turkey Tuesday. What do you think this is? New York City? Toast Tuesday. It's Tuna Tuesday. Tangerine Tuesday. Tofu Tuesday. Turnip Tuesday. Tea Tuesday. <sighs> Y'all must have never had the bold flavor of pace. America's favorite salsa for tacos. Straight out of Texas. Oh, of course, tacos. I guess that makes a lot more sense. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Tuesdays are for tacos! Tacos are for pace. Okay, cowboys and cowgirls, I think that's just about gonna wrap it up for this episode. If there's anything I did here that was unclear, or if you just wanna tell me how much you hate me, drop down to the comment section below and hit me up, buttercup. As always, if you found this video insightful or entertaining, I'd like to see more of them in the future, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. Until next time, this is Vinny Galay, and Grow Rich.